If we're interested in obtaining an unbiased estimate of some causal effect by using multiple regression, what we want to do is make sure that the coefficient on that causal variable of interest doesn't suffer from omitted variable bias. Now, to do this, one important strategy is to add control variables to the regression that em eliminate the omitted variable bias. So we want to talk today about control variables. Now, we could mitigate or eliminate omitted variable bias by including omitted causal variables. That is, if we think that we understand the process that's determining the dependent variable y, we might try to include variables for all the causal factors that uh, affect y, especially those that are correlated with our variable of interest. But we don't really need to identify all the causal variables. We could be doing, pursuing a strategy whereby we include other variables that while not themselves causal, are sufficiently correlated with the omitted causal factors that they can effectively control for those and eliminate, eliminate omitted variable bias. So let's re re turn to an example that we've looked at repeatedly, which is the class size effect on uh, test scores in school districts. And one thing we've seen is that we suspect there may be omitted variable bias occurring because we may not be adequately controlling for the socioeconomic status of the school districts, and that could be correlated with both the class size and the test score performance. So here's a very simplified version of a multiple regression for this case where the dependent variable is the test score in district I, and that's a linear function of the student-teacher ratio in that district, and that, of course, is our variable of interest. We're interested in getting a good estimate of this beta 1, which is essentially the class size effect on student learning. And then we have another variable, a second regressor, which is the percentage of kids on subsidized meal plans. And we're going to interpret this meal percentage variable as essentially a control for local conditions, local, local economic conditions, in particular poverty, which is uh, how the meal percent plans uh, often operate. Now, this is not necessarily a causal variable. After all, you might think that if the kids are well-fed, they're getting subsidized meals, they would perform better on, on the tests. But in fact, here, we're going to find, typically, that beta 2 is negative, and that's because the meal percentage variable is really serving as kind of a proxy, a stand-in for local poverty conditions. And it's often used because we often have uh, rather imperfect measures of local poverty rates, and the meal percentage is uh, a good control variable to capture some of those things. Now that raises the question then, under what conditions will these control variables be good enough to eliminate omitted, omitted variable bias in the coefficient of interest, which again is this beta 1? The key assumption or condition that has to hold is conditional mean independence and this is what it looks like mathematically. So just to talk through it, what it says is that the expected value of the error term conditional on all the variables in the regression, all the regressors, x1, x2, etc., is equal to the expected value of that error term conditional on all the variables in the regression except for x1. In other words, if we think of those x2, x3, x4 as the control variables, what we're saying is that the expected value of the error term with all the variables included is the same as it would be with just the controls. Now what's the interpretation of this somewhat obscure looking equation? Well what it means is that x1, which is our causal variable of interest, and the error term, u, are uncorrelated once we control for or condition on all the control variables. So uh, we're not saying that x is uncorrelated with the error term by itself. There could be omitted variable bias. But once we put those control variables in, we have wiped out that source of correlation. And then we get an unbiased estimate of beta 1. Now this conditional mean independence assumption is a weaker assumption than the one we had been making heretofore, which was that the conditional mean of the error term is zero. If the conditional mean of the error term is zero, it assures that all the coefficients on x1, x2, x3, all the regressor coefficients are unbiased. But with conditional mean independence, 
we might end up with biased coefficients on the control variables, but we don't really care so much about that because our main issue is to assure that the coefficient on x1 is unbiased. The other variables are in there as essentially just control variables. Now, why does this work to eliminate that omitted variable bias in uh, our estimate of beta 1, the, the effect of interest? Now, I'm going to look through a very simplified case and make a number of simplifying assumptions, but to try to give you a feel for what go is going on when we include these control variables. So here's the simplified case. We've got our variable, outcome variable. In our example, would be the test score. We've got our variable of interest, x1, for example, class size or student-teacher ratio. And then we've got a single control variable here, x2. That would be something like the percentage of kids on the uh, subsidized meal plans. And that's the idea. So there's our, our simplified uh, two-regressor model with uh, one control variable, x2, and one variable of interest, x1. Now, to capture the idea of conditional mean independence in a very simplified way, I'm going to follow uh, what Stock and Watson do in their uh, Appendix 7.2, and that is to assume that the error term, u, has the following kind of structure. So here's the assumption we'll make about the error term, ui. ui is going to be a linear function of x2, the control variable, and then this other little error term, that's uh, the Greek letter nu. So the, that guy is a gamma, and that guy is a nu. And what we're saying is that the overall error term for the regression u is a linear function of x2, and then there's so this leftover random part, nu. And nu, we're going to assume, has conditional mean 0. So that's our, our old assumption, that, that nu is basically not correlated with anything. And so nu is kind of pure noise, but the error term overall, u, does depend on x2. We can see that. So we're assuming that u and x2 are correlated, and that means that in the overall regression, we're going to get a biased estimate of beta 2. We have the classic kind of omitted variable bias problem here, uh, or that there's a correlation between the error term and x2, also it's, uh, frequently called endogeneity. Uh, but conditional mean independence with respect to variable x1, the variable of interest, does hold in this case because if you'll notice, thinking back to the way that error term is structured, u does not depend on x1, it only depends on x2, right? Looking back, we can see that, uh, that the u there has x2 in it and this nu, which is uncorrelated with anything. Substituting in for ui, we put in that expression for the error term that includes the x2 component and the random noise component, nu. So this is our expanded regression equation. And then I'm going to collect some terms. So I've got, for an intercept term, beta 0 plus gamma 0, right? There's beta 0, gamma 0. I have beta 1, x1. And then I can collect the uh, terms that are on the x2 variable here. That's beta 2, this one, and gamma 2, that one. And then we have this leftover nu term. That's the nu error term. Since nu, that nu error, has a conditional mean of 0, all of these coefficients are unbiased estimates under the assumptions. So our estimate of the intercept is an unbiased estimate of beta 0 plus gamma 0. The coefficient that we estimate on the x2 variable, the control variable, is an unbiased estimate of the sum of two effects, beta 2 and gamma 2. And most importantly, the coefficient on the x1 variable, that is the, say, the class size variable, under these assumptions, is an unbiased estimate of beta 1. Now that's crucial because that's what we were hoping to accomplish. So we get an unbiased estimate of the causal coefficient of interest. That was beta 1. But note, the coefficient that we estimate on x2 is an unbiased estimate of beta 2 plus gamma 2, not beta 2. So in fact, the coefficient in this uh, regression 
on the control variable is a biased estimate of the causal effect of that variable x2. But that's okay. We're not trying to get a good estimate of the effect of the real effect or unbiased effect of meal plans on student test performance. x2, the meal plan variable here, is only acting as a control variable. What we're really after was that unbiased estimate of the effect of x1 on y. And under the assumption of conditional mean independence, uh, we get that an unbiased estimate of beta 1 from our regression. Crucially, we have to have control variables that we are confident clean out the sources of correlation between x1 and the error term. If that's not the case, then we're still going to have the potential for omitted variable bias in beta 1. And this is not something you can test for statistically. You have to have knowledge of the circumstances and convince yourself that through a comparison of a set of regressions, you've done a good job uh, cleaning out those potential sources of bias.